Hi guys! Today I'm going to go briefly, as briefly as I can, into the process that brought me to where I am today, where I've been in contact with my biological mother in Korea. I say as briefly as I can because it is a really, really long process and I wasn't really aware how long it would be until I was in the middle of it. Uh, so for anyone who is out there who's in a similar situation to where I was about a year and a half or two years ago where you're thinking about going out there and looking for your biological parent or parents, just a word of advice, be patient and be persistent because it's going to take a lot longer than you think it will be and the waiting is certainly not easy. So you will make it through, but be patient and be persistent. So for myself, I knew already that I was adopted through Holt International. Uh, there is a US office in Eugene, which is in Oregon State. And it was pretty simple to facilitate the search. Uh, I just had to appeal to the agency first to make sure that they knew that they were the agency that had brought me over to this country in the first place. And then they were able to provide me with copies of my adoption files from the US office. And to that, I will pull us aside and say that Holt USA has a completely different set of files than Holt Korea. And I had read about this and it seems to be pretty standard practice across other countries from which people are adopted as well. Most of the time the files will have the same kind of information but from reading accounts from other adoptees who have started their search as well, sometimes there is very, very different information or sometimes one file will have at least a little bit more than the other, sometimes significantly more information than the other does. So I knew that I wanted to have both sets of files to have a more well-rounded idea of what was going on to see if there were any discrepancies between the two because I grew up with not really any information at all about my circumstances and any sort of information that I did receive I found um, was actually misinformation so it was really beneficial for me to start this even if I didn't find anybody at the very end because at the very least it gave me much more truth about the circumstances that led me to be in this country, which um, I'm very grateful to have been able to find that. It totally changed how I felt about being here the way that I was as um, a child adopted from another country. So after contacting Holt, letting them know that I wanted to start a search for my birth family. Uh, there's quite a few forms that I had to fill out. They all had to be notarized. So since they had to be notarized, they had to be mailed in. And Oregon is not far from LA, but it's still, it takes much longer than you want it to, to be sent in the mail. So I had to wait for them to mail mailed over until they started the whole process. Um, and then after they receive my paperwork, they say on the site that it'll take about two to three weeks usually to get a copy of your file which is because which i did not know until i started this whole process all of the files are off-site in file cabinets in paper copies nothing is digital uh, so when they receive a request they have to send somebody to this off-site to go digging through all these file folders to find what they need and you would think that in the 21st century they would have thought to digitize these things but they have not so it did actually take about that two to three week time period for me to get a copy of my file of my American file um, and once I got that they did send over an assessment saying hey we think there's enough information in here would you like us to appeal to the agency in Korea to get your Korean file and of course I said yes and of course I had to send in more paperwork which also had to be notarized and it also had to be sent via USPS so a little bit more 
waiting time. And then it started getting weird because it has since changed on the website for uh, Holtz International. So when I started the search, there was a note that says between May and September, the Korean office does not accept requests for birth parent search. You can't even send it and then just have it sort of sit and wait. Um, they won't even take it into their office. Since then it has changed. They changed the verbiage on the website to say between May and September, it's a really high tourist season. So it may take much longer than if you sent them in um, outside of that time period. But at the time that I was doing the search, it wasn't even an option. So I had to wait until September to have that part of the process taken care of. It was the same kind of situation as in Holt USA where everything is paper, so they have to go through and manually look for everything in file cabinets. I had submitted in September and there were already 140 requests before mine. And that was from when they had just opened up the time period to accept them. So there's so many people right now who are in the same boat that I am trying to find information and part of it is because there was a really really huge wave of transnational adoptees from Korea to the US. It was trendy to have you know a fabulous exotic child from Korea. Um, I was at the very tail end of it but I'm still getting to the same point as a lot of a lot of the people who were adopted between the mid 80s to the mid 90s um, where a lot of us are growing up and realizing hey I, I really want to find out a lot of these things I want to find some more information and we're all hitting the same roadblocks at the same time and um, the, the agencies are just not equipped to be able to handle our requests um, in, a, in a timely efficient way there's just too many of us there's too much paperwork and there's not enough of them to be able to get it out to us I hope over the next couple of years it will become increasingly easier for adoptees to find information. Hopefully things are already underway to get files digitized and to streamline the whole process um, because for me it was, it was painfully long and I did not hear anything until May 2016 which is about nine months later. Um, for the first time I found out what my biological mother's last name was it told me the time of day that I was born, uh, but it wasn't really that much more information, but they did tell me that there was enough information there to be able to really search for her. So what happens is the agency in Korea will appeal to Korea Adoptive Services, which is KAS. It's a part of the Korean government, and they try to locate these people at their most current address. And what usually happens is a pretty generic telegram. So it'll say something like, someone from America is trying to find you. So it could be something that maybe looks like junk mail in case the person is not in a good place to have that kind of information come out that they had relinquished a child in the past. That might be something I talk about in another video, just the, the gender politics of adoption and why some of these barriers are up. So yeah, so a telegram will be sent out and then if the person is contacted, then they will contact the agency, the Korean agency will contact the American agency, and then the American agency will contact the adoptee. So in my case, in May of 2016, the Korean agency told me there was enough information, they would try to find her, and then I didn't hear anything again until December 2016 when I got an email from my Korean mother. Uh, in the meantime, a Holt Korea says that they had actually located her in July, but that Holt USA had never told me. It's at this point, it's just both sides are so disorganized. They're, they're not very forthcoming with information unless you are constantly berating them for it. So it doesn't really matter, I guess, where it went wrong, but it did take 
a really, really long time for all of that information. And pretty much every step of the way, there was a really, really long wait time where I couldn't do anything except continually email the agency and just remind them that I was looking for this information because I was just waiting on other people to do their job. So it was super frustrating. Uh, it, it was something that I had read about. I didn't really know how excruciating it would be until I experienced it for myself. And again, for anybody watching this, oh my God, my eyes are so dry. So for anybody who is searching for birth parents, just again, my advice from the beginning, just be patient and be persistent. If the information is out there, as long as you follow those two things, it will come to you eventually. Just don't get discouraged. Just be patient, be persistent. Uh, understand that that information is yours. It's your right to have it, but it will take a little bit of time. So yeah, so that was the whole process. It took about a year and a half. I was very lucky, even though it did take a lot longer than I wanted. I'm like so incredibly happy that I started this process. I kind of would barely entertain the idea when I was younger, but I, I had a lot of latent guilt about it, about investigating or researching anything about my biological mother that I just kind of pushed that idea to the side. But uh, once I got to a certain age, I was like, you know what, this is something I should do it for myself. Um, and if she's out there, I should do it for her too, just to let her know. I'm here, I'm okay, I hope you're okay, I'm thinking about you. And even if it never progressed past that point, at least I tried it instead of just being afraid of making other people feel bad or, uh, you know, coming up empty handed. I would still be really grateful that I started this. So to anybody watching, don't be afraid of it. Don't think that you're being selfish or anything by doing this. It's it's your life and it's your information it's your past and you have a right to it and good luck and that's it for today bye